So I just got the new Logitech Combo Touch for the M4 iPad Pro. So we're gonna talk about if this device is actually better than the previous version, if it's actually worth the money at all, and if it's even a good accessory for your iPad. So first of all, I wanna talk about the build of the case itself and how this quality actually is gonna hold up over time. So one thing you might notice is that this is now made out of the same silicone material that's on the Apple Magic Keyboard, or at least roughly. And that's pretty new for Logitech. They usually use more of a fabric kind of material on their cases. So that's pretty interesting. Some of you guys out there are gonna love the new material. Others are gonna hate it. I'll be honest, I'm kind of right in the middle. I do like how it visually looks. I think the black is much better of a color than the gray fabric they had before. But at the same time, this is definitely smudging a lot more than previous cases. So let's look at the bottom here. Hopefully you guys can see that on the reflection. I cleaned this case right before filming this. So not even like a couple minutes ago. And it's already looking a lot more smudged up and just not that great on the bottom. And something to note though, this bottom is actually aluminum metal right here. Just this bottom piece. There might be some other metal like in the hinge up here potentially, but the only visual metal is right here. At first glance, I actually thought this inside material right here was also metal, but this is definitely a hard plastic not metal. They also talk about how their case is now thinner, which I do think that's true. Although I don't really know if that's much to do with their design changing. I think it's mostly the fact that the iPad is thinner now. So it just kind of came with the territory, but the stand still feels pretty sturdy, even though it is a little bit thinner. I think than the last version, it still will hold its position very well and won't shake around at all. But if you want it to move and you press down on it with some actual force, it goes down really nice and you can get a lot of different viewing angles with this case. And that is a very nice part of it. So I talked about the old combo touch a little bit already, but I do want to give some more direct comparisons. So luckily I still have my M1 iPad Pro here and it has the old Logitech Combo Touch on it. Now, you're gonna get a little sneak peek into my setup right now. I'm actually using the M1 iPad Pro to do live multicam with two iPhones as my cameras. I just switched over from using my Mac and Wirecast and a couple webcam, stuff like that. So this is actively running this video right here. As you can see, this is the first video I've actually used live multicam on at my at home setup. If you want to see me use it as like a more mobile setup, I did that in a video where I compared the Anchorwork wireless microphones to the Hollyland wireless microphones. So because I do need this to stay recording, I won't be able to switch out of this and go to a notes app or anything like that. I've tried to run them at the same time in the past and it actually ends the recording if you go out of this app at all. I'm not gonna risk it, I'm just gonna keep it in this. So as you can see side by side, these materials are very different. This is that fabric I was mentioning before and this is the smooth silicone material. The fabric, probably doesn't feel quite as premium, but it does not smudge or look greasy. And I've had this for like two years now. And here, let me disconnect this keyboard so we can take a closer look at it. It is held up really, really well. And I wasn't sure about this, but it looks like the keyboard on the new one is somewhat thinner than the old keyboard. Now, unfortunately, I don't have an 11 inch size version of this keyboard on me. So it's possible that that one was already a little bit thinner, but I do think this is thinner objectively. That's what Logitech claims in their website. This has a curve on it right here. So it looks a little bit thinner than it actually is. Really, it's got a pretty thick back on it where this does have a little bit of that curve, but it's equal on almost both sides. And it's not as deceptive as to how thin it actually is. And it does feel really thin in hand. I think that's why they put the aluminum on the bottom here, because if they didn't, it probably would just bend in half and break really easily. Looking at just the cases around the iPad themselves, this has the same viewing angle as the other one. They could both go that low, no problem. So this is really cool to see how well they can actually work doing this. I will say though, 
the hinge definitely feels a bit stiffer on the old model. It gives me a bit more confidence that when it's locked in a position, it's not gonna move unless I want it to move. Where this hinge, it's not like it's unstable. Like I showed earlier, it still keeps its position pretty well. Because it's made of that silicone material, it grips well too. So that helps it not move when it's not supposed to. But just the hinge itself feels a little bit easier to move and adjust. And I'm just a little worried it might wear out faster over time. I don't know that to be certain or anything like that. I have no proof of this, but I do have a little bit of concern as it's something that could happen. As you can see, the lip around the iPad is pretty comparable. If anything, it's almost a little bit thicker on the new one, but if it is, it's fractional and not by much at all. And they have those pins at the bottom that allows for the keyboard connection. And of course, this entire thing pairs via the smart connector. So you don't have to worry about charging these at all. Nothing like that. The button for the power button is actually a little bit bigger on the new one. That's kind of nice. And there is some other changes to buttons. Do my best to show this in a way that actually makes sense without ending my recording here. But this actually has a plus and a minus button instead of just regular volume buttons. So it's kind of nice that let you just feel around even the dark and you knew which one you were pressing. But if you want the volume to dynamically adjust depending on the orientation, which is now an option in iPadOS, it does not work well with this because, well, there's preset button feelings. So it would mess with your head and it's not as good that way. So they opted for not having them in these new versions. So they just look like the regular buttons. But I do notice they're pretty soft and kind of hard to press, especially the one closest to the power button. It's not satisfying of a click or a press at all. And I often question if I'm even hitting it or not. Not my favorite buttons. That's actually a very disappointing factor of this case, to be honest. The feeling of these buttons is not good at all. The power button is fine, but these buttons are not. Another pretty interesting thing is that this is the trackpad on the 13 inch of the old style. This is the trackpad on the 11 inch of the new style. And they're basically the same width, but the 11 inch is definitely taller and gives more space. They both feel like they click in the exact same way. I don't think it got better or worse with this new version. But as you can see, what they did is they actually pushed the keyboard much closer to the edge of the keyboard section itself, where this one has an actual space right here. So these keys are just pushed all the way up, giving the trackpad much more room to breathe, and they expanded it and made it a lot bigger. You can watch some videos on the 13 inch size of the Logitech Combo Touch, and man, that trackpad is massive. So if all you want is a big trackpad, then this is totally something that you can go for. It's much bigger than Magic Keyboards, all of that stuff. It is very big. I do wanna mention they also changed some of the buttons on the function row. You can see they put the keyboard brightness right next to the screen brightness, which I think makes a lot of sense. They have a dictation and Siri button and a screenshot button instead of bringing up the software keyboard and instead of a search button. Then all the media controls are exactly the same. And then instead of a lock button, they have a do not disturb button. So again, it's gonna be kind of personal preference which one of these you actually prefer. I think the new choices are kind of better overall, although I would have preferred the actual escape key instead of the home button key. To be honest though, the typing feel is basically exactly the same between the two of them. I am not a keyboard snob. I'm probably the worst person to give typing feel input from, but I'll describe what I know. What I know is that this feels good to type on, I enjoy it, and it's not very different than the Magic Keyboard. And they're definitely not different from each other at all. The keys feel the same, they feel really good to type on, no problems there. I'm glad the keys didn't suffer a lot, even though the bottom case did get a little bit thinner. The last big thing I wanna show between these two different versions is how the keyboard can actually fold around. So on the new version of the Logitech Combo Touch, you can fold this backwards as well. And as soon as it passes a certain point, it actually deactivates the keyboard. And so you can see it bring up the software keyboard here. And you can even rest on it there and just have it folded behind. Still use the stand and everything if you just don't want to take it off. Or you can put the stand down and fully collapse this on the back of it. And the keys are deactivated, they won't work. So you don't have to worry about accidentally typing anything or clicking on anything. None of that's gonna work, but 
at least it folds around, you don't have to take it off in order to fold it around. With the old style, you have to physically disconnect the keyboard, reattach it backwards to get that same effect. And then to also fold it back and have it collapse there, which you can still do on this one if you prefer that method. But see, if you even try to do that on the old style, it just takes the keyboard right off. It will not bend backwards as much as I try to make it. It will not go. So some other things I want to mention with the Logitech Combo Touch is just, okay, is this actually a great companion for the M4 iPad Pro? And I think in a lot of ways, it is. The iPad Pro, now that it, it supports keyboards and keyboard cases like this, can now do some laptop things, but it's also a tablet. So this form factor suits it pretty well because when you want it to just be a tablet, no more keyboard, it's just a tablet. But if you need that keyboard, there it goes. You have a keyboard and it's easy to type on. Even with the smaller size, the keys feel really well spaced and everything feels well optimized. All the function keys work with the software, all the volume, everything like that. It just works and that's really cool. I don't have the greatest angle for this shot right here, but I will show a little bit of how this fits in my lap. If nothing else, you get a better view of my transformers and you know, you can't go wrong with that. And I mean, it's definitely workable. It's not like it's gonna be the most lap friendly. It's not really a laptop kind of form factor, but you can get the kickstand in a nice position, set it on your lap and do some work on it, do some typing and it works just fine. I will say though, I have done some things where if I press too hard on the palm rest, I actually trigger the trackpad because I'm flexing the keyboard too much. So just be a little careful. This thing is kind of thin. I'm a little worried that if I put too much pressure on it, I'll break it. And if that's at all concern for you, you may want to stay away from this version. But with me just being somewhat conscious of that, it works really well. And honestly, I've been super happy with this case. I've been using it every day since I got it and I almost don't wanna go back to the Magic Keyboard. I will be comparing the Magic Keyboard to the Combo Touch in a video coming up really soon. So be ready for that. Something that you can definitely say about this device is hey, it does provide a pretty good amount of protection for your very expensive device. I got the one terabyte version with nano texture. This thing is expensive. So having a case that fully covers the sides and offers some real drop protection is pretty stinking nice because even if this keyboard case would break, this is $200 versus well over a thousand on the iPad itself. Now, this is me being very picky, but a very sad aspect of this case is I got the silver iPad. Now it's kind of ready to show off that white and silver look. And this keyboard case only comes in this color. And I'm a little sad about that. I would have loved a white version of this combo touch to go with the silver iPad. I mean, come on Logitech. Is it really that hard to make a white version? I don't know, but I would love it. I would have gotten that one for sure. And you know, if they made a white version, I probably would replace my Magic Key War with that in a heartbeat. I'm still considering it now because I don't know, I got the silver iPad. Do I have to cover it all up with a black keyboard case? This is also part of my, do I buy it or not process. It's a little sad that I'm that concerned about the color, but something I think about, and I think it's fair to say that some of you out there might actually not want to buy this keyboard case just because it comes in black. So I'd say, is this keyboard case worth the money? Is it an improvement of the previous version? Yes and yes. I think the amount of protection, the amount of features that this offers is well worth the $220 I spent on it. Now, it's going to be a little bit more if you get the 13th version. I think it's about 260, something like that. But it still is worth it. I mean, especially if you look at the Magic Keyboard being 300 or 350. I mean, this is just as much value, in my opinion, as the Magic Keyboard, if not more in some ways. And it's almost $100 cheaper. So I say yes, for sure. And I do think the way that the keyboard can fold around now is a pretty nice improvement over the previous version and it being a little bit thinner, a little bit lighter, it helps for sure. However, I will warn with this larger trackpad, I have heard of some people that got really annoyed by trying to rest their palms here and making the trackpad click a lot. I don't rest mine like all the way on the keyboard case very much, especially for the 11 inch. So I rest mine more right here and this is not really a problem at all. I do know some reviewers out there who have said, especially with the 13th version, that it's so big it actually gets in the way. So I definitely caution you about that. 
I would recommend trying to get this from Amazon or something that has a really good and easy return policy. So worst case scenario, if it just does not work for you, you can send it right back. So the worst things about this device is probably just that it still feels a little awkward when trying to use it in your lap. The trackpad can almost be too big, like I mentioned, and it's also just not as perfectly satisfying as the new Magic Keyboard trackpad with that haptic feedback and the basically Mac-like experience you get with it. It is really, really nice to use. And even though it's not as big as this trackpad, I think it's better still. And then like I mentioned, it doesn't have an escape key and it's just the home button key, which is fine. It's just, I would prefer an actual escape key. And lastly, it does add some bulk to your iPad. And these things are really nice and thin and this does make it feel a little bit chunkier, but it's really not anything more than the Magic Keyboard ads, and that's where you keep your iPad all the time. Well, then this is not really any different anyway. However, I kind of liked that with the Magic Keyboard, I could easily take my iPad out of that and feel how thin and light it is, but I also understand that's not how everyone's gonna use their iPads, and it's definitely not as protective, and this is gonna keep it way more safe. So that's really my review of the new Logitech Combo Touch for the M4 iPad Pros. And there's a lot to love here. I think a lot of people are gonna find that this is the one to have. This is the keeper. This is what they should get. And I'm really thinking this might just be the case that I will keep on this M4 iPad Pro. Now, again, I'm prefacing this with, I have the 11 inch size. So I know there were some inconveniences with the larger trackpad on 13 inch, and there might just be differences with that size. So if you have a 13 inch iPad Pro and you're watching this video, take that with a grain of salt. You can still go check it out. I recommend getting it through Amazon so you can return it, but just know there could be some differences because of the size. I really do think this is a really, really cool keyboard case for a lot of people, and I will be directly comparing it with the Magic Keyboard coming really soon. I purchased this with my own money, and this is my own opinions, and I really hope you gain something from this review and that you actually learn something. That's the goal of this channel, is to have actually valuable content not just repeating the same thing that everyone else is saying already on youtube so if you feel like you've learned something please let me know in the comments below let me know if there's anything else you want to see about this case anything else you want me to compare it to anything at all like that just please let me know i have a goal to get to 5,000 subscribers before the end of the summer i really hope i can make it summer is going by way too fast so spread the word get it out there get everyone you know to subscribe to my channel just Anything would help me out. Even just you watching does help support this channel and I thank you for taking the time. If my voice sounds a little off today, I am just getting over a cold, which is the middle of the summer. I don't know how I got a cold, but I got one. And <laughs> my throat really took the brunt of it. So it's still recovering right now. So if I sound a little off, I do apologize. It's not the microphones, it's me. So this is an iPhone 15 Pro Max, but I want you to guess what iPhone is recording this shot right now? Your only hint is that it's not an iPhone 15 Pro Max. Let me know what you think it is down in the comments below. And as always, have a great day.